right, everybody, we're back after the games. We're here in Nanaimo in front of my dirty garage, and we're finally getting back to doing some exercise. Training, we're actually training now, not just exercising. But we've got the Rogue Invitational on the horizon, so things are starting to ramp back up, and uh, yeah, I'm getting myself back into it. I'm feeling good, I'm ready for another year, so let's uh, follow along and see what we get into. So you're going 40 20? Yeah, 40 20. So this is what? 10 by 5 back squat? 10 by 5, yeah. 65%. So we got what? Yeah. A mask right there, hey? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I had to double check. I didn't double check myself. So. Yeah, 310 by 5, 90 second rest. So just some volume to build up again. I haven't done anything really heavy yet since the games. So just kind of getting back to decent weight of squatting and weightlifting and all that stuff like that. Yeah. Mostly it's just been fitness. How is coming back from the games and like starting training again? Starts always tough. I mean, you ease yourself into it, make it easy on yourself. The first week of like actual training, it's a little hard. <laughs> Stuff like this, you like do a bunch of squatting, do pistols, do GHDs, and your body's like, oh man, I thought we were done with this. <laughs> Not so bad. That was as bad as it would be. I feel like it's just the kind of thing you, this first bunch of the session will be like that. Yeah. You just like, you're gonna slowly get tired and sweaty. We don't really get super out of breath. Yeah. It's like a long, slow strength session. And then some conditioning at the end. Hip thrust. I haven't done hip thrust in a long time. What's the weight of that? Oh. Heavy. <laughs> it's just 8 out of 10 effort. Were you doing a lot of hip thrust and training before? I've got, we kind of go in weird waves where there's like periods where we'll do a lot more of that style, trying to build some power and strength. It's this time of year. For a lot of the season, I don't think I do. Yeah. This kind of time of year, maybe through the winter, I'll do a bit more of that. I gotta get better too at my hip thrust. I think it'll help my power positions a lot. Some guys are killer at that. I need to get a bigger butt. I'm here to hear, <laughs> folks. Look, any advice? Anybody have any advice? Send it my way. <laughs> so watch my weight just. Mm, mm, mm. One sec. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Move 1,500 pounds. 15,000. Sorry. 15,000 pounds. Yeah. That's a cool metric. It's it's like it's like a fun fact. Yeah. You know, it's not really practical information. But at the end of a session, it'll give you your cumulative load, depending on how you set it up. Yeah. Some things, if I'm doing, you know, my metcon with a bunch of dumbbell snatches, yeah, we'll count those. But with all my weightlifting stuff, it'll accumulate your total amount of weight moved. That's cool. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Every now and then, it gives you like a bump, being like, hey, since you started using the app, you moved a million pounds. <laughs> like, hey, right on. <laughs> That's train heroic? Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It gives you that little bump, you know? Makes you still feel good. Plus, I love checking boxes, baby. Oh, nothing feels better. That, what they had briefed us is you push the sled, 
down kind of one alley and you're unloading your kettlebells on the one side and then you would sort of do a U-turn around so you'd be loading them back on the other side. So your kettlebells would be in kind of a straight line and your sled would have gone like this. Yeah. So you go here, you take them off, take them off, take them off, you turn it around, you do clean and jerks, put it in, push, clean and jerks, put it in, push, clean and jerks, put it in, push and finish. So you do this U pattern with the sled. Lanes were way too tight to do that. Apparently some other lanes did it. I got to the end and was like, there was no space between my kettlebells and I had one of the pylons yeah. on the field. I would be hitting the pylon with my sled if I tried to go on that side. So my judge was just like, just turn it straight around and put it the same place you came down. Yeah. So I did that. <clears throat> but that meant my sled was right next to Lazar basically, which I think is what they were kind of trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. Mind you, if he'd have done the same thing, if he'd have done the U-turn, I would have, been, would have been sled to sled, so I don't know. I think our whole section just called an audible. And you do whatever you gotta do, and, and then I feel like we everybody stands wide, right, to do the kettlebells between yeah. the legs. So we had no space. I had to every single time throw my pylon behind us, yeah. behind the whole group, so that I could stand over there so I'd have space to stand with wide legs. And I loaded my sled, and I think after the second round, I loaded my sled and went to push it, and Laz was standing with wide legs, and I like hit his foot. And he like, in the first round, he like yelled something at me, like, you gotta like move over. And I'm like, man, I, I'm in the next lane with Sam practically, and I'm throwing pylons out of the way already. It's like, buddy, I got nowhere to go. Like, yell at the guy on the other side of you, like, I got no space. Yeah. So, I feel like it was very tight. I mean, in, in the actual workout with the rope climbs, it would have spread out more. Yeah. So you wouldn't have had that tight impact, but you felt really buttoned in there. It was very <laughs> tight. Incentive to try to get ahead of people. Say the pad was nice. The the new uh, technology you guys got here, across from the Nymo. Yeah, you know, brand new technology. Um, it feels a lot better than not having it. Or now I'm gonna just roll the shirt up or something like that. To get less bruises on my hips, probably. I think you've just hit a new level of influencer status. Doing my booty work? Yeah. Hell yeah, you gotta put some nice music in the back of that. <laughs>
Is this like knee rehab or is this anything targeted? Uh, I think it's supposed to be time. Like it's, it's supposed to be some leg strengthening, but not this. Yeah. Right? Like more posterior chain leg strengthening. So mm -hmm. I'm putting less pressure on my knee. Um, you know, strictly speaking, knee rehab would probably be more stepping down slowly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, knees are pretty warm now. So. Are you feeling this at all? Or is this? What's up? Are you feeling the movement or is it good? You mean like feeling it? Like pain wise? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, like I feel like anytime you start doing something, yeah. you know, I start, I gotta creak into place a little bit. This will help me warm up for pistols later. True. So it's like, I feel like my left knee was actually a little sore there, which is my good knee. But it's, fine. it's just like, you gotta get used to it a little bit. I, I think there was this old interview with Rich when somebody asked him if he was like feeling hurt and he's like injuries are like gremlins I feel like they're just like traveling all over my body he's like one when I feel like one goes away it just like pops up somewhere else yeah you feel that you know what he's probably on to something but I think it's a, it's a tension right like your attention is drawn to the thing that's currently hurting you the most yeah so sometimes, if you're like, you've been doing a lot of squatting, maybe your knees are bugging you a little bit, or they're just achy. And then you go do something else, and it's like, God, you know, my elbow's actually a little sore, and suddenly your knees don't hurt so bad anymore, right? So, the tension makes a big difference. Right now I'm doing all lower body, so I'm feeling the legs. For the most part, you're pretty okay putting all your training bits on film and, and on YouTube and that. Do you ever subscribe to like the, you know, some people are like really protective. Like, it seemed like Matt used to be really protective over things he did. I don't know, what are you gonna do? I, I feel like I really, I kind of believe that uh, you can give people the keys if you want. The reality is they still have to do all the work and most people won't do it. Yeah. It's just like the reality of it is that it's pretty hard and it takes a lot of work and I can show you the workout that I do it doesn't necessarily mean that's what you need to do it doesn't necessarily mean much like do it if you want it's fun it's, people are always looking for creative ways to do more training and things too like it's more for the average person to be like hey cool I like to look at that I'll do something similar maybe help people get creative with their training but like what I'm doing isn't what everybody needs to do and you know, what Matt's doing isn't what everybody needs to do. And, you know, even if you, it is what you need to do, like, are you going to do it every day for five years? Yeah. <laughs> like, if you are, go for it, honestly. Fill your boots. Um, but it's just sort of the reality. Like, you can, you can show people the way, and uh, some people will walk it, and some people won't. So, I'm not too worried about it. Not worried about your competitor sneaking up on you? I mean, most people who I'm competing with now are already committed to doing other things that they need to do, right? So they're not gonna look at what I'm doing and be like, oh, that's what I need. <laughs> at least very unlikely. And if they are, they probably shouldn't be. Um, people just need to kind of focus on what they need to do. And so the, so the person who's looking at what I need, I'm doing and being like, that's sweet, that's what I need to do, they might be five years away and I'll be, they all be gone by then, you know? <laughs> so I'm not that worried about it. But I don't know, in general, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of happy to help people learn things too like I, I don't know I think helping people get better and get fitter and stuff is great and that's you know part of my actual job is doing that right yeah so I, I think that that's kind of just my attitude around that stuff is a little more uh, living that way and let everybody try to get go on their own journey and get as fit as they can right yeah he's such a kid the dog's still Trying to get every piece of food from him. Just a little drop, Ollie's there waiting for it. He's so cute. He kills me. Yeah. I love how he's just got no sh no clothes on, just a diaper on. Home life, man. So you showed up. I've been home alone. I only put clothes on today because you were coming. <laughs> Six plates on the sled? It depends on the rubber, I feel like. The more lanes you do, and it gets warm and sticky on the rubber. Yeah. It just gets harder every time, every round. Maybe I'm just getting tired, though, I don't know. 
That also could be. Could be. 30 pound wall balls, 11 feet. What was this it? Would be as high as possible. Oh. I actually didn't know how, like, you were throwing it pretty high. I got no, it on. Much higher than 11 feet, probably. Oh. Because what's 10 feet here? Blue line? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Some would have been 12, maybe. Yeah, you might have been 12 there. Uh, I feel like the, uh, that 30 pound ball comes down fast. Like, yeah. It hits you hard from that high. Have you been doing a lot more of that? Or is this the first time? Uh, we've done it a bit for like a while. Usually like this though, it's like power output training. Yeah. Not really often that I do it in like a long conditioning piece. Mm -hmm. It's like a uh, interval style. Yeah. Explosive. So we do more, more like that, like heavy and high, just like jump, do whatever, just like push. Get yeah. That power output. I don't think I've ever seen you jump on a wall ball like that. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so that we do that a little bit now and then. That kind of stuff with like high box jumps, heavy high wall balls, those sort of drills. But I think since the game's probably the first time I've done it, it feels uh, just like I remember. <laughs> oh, I feel like the sled though, with uh, our floor here isn't exactly in line. Oh yeah. So I feel like when I push, I like pull the pieces of the floor apart. And every step, every time I move another tile, the tile slides back like three inches. So I lose half a step and then I like, you get another three few steps and then you lose a half a step and then a few steps and you lose a half a step. It's nice, frustrating. It's a good mental practice. That's good mental practice. So uh, you don't have that cushy turf here, you know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta work for your, your steps. It's either that rubber or I do it outside on concrete where it's like on a slant. Oh. And then you're just, you're always drifting off to the side, trying to like crank it in, so. I'd rather be on the rubber. A little harder to predict, but you don't get to put as many plates on it because it's a little stickier. <laughs> so you look weaker. But, it's all the same. snatch at 135 oh, burpee over bar I saw this the 30 second bike in between yeah what do you think of that also oh Did by the way so my it's worse than that I messaged Michelle being like hey what, what do you think I should do here like do you want me to mix up kind of some touch and go some singles because <laughs> that's a workout you could look at and do in singles yeah and I was like ah you know maybe I do six seven touch and go single out keep some speed on the burpees bike and, and try to hold that in my head that's what i'm thinking she says nah do touch and go I said, oh okay like you know three sets of four like what do you what do you kind of think you want to see she says no 12 12 <laughs> touch and go i'm broken every round first day back from the games this is like my first real workout back basically yeah maybe second day and i'm like oh uh okay like that's 70 something Snatches at 135. Yeah. So I'm like, wow, all right, well, okay, these burpees are going to be really slow. So the first thing I thought, and she says, no, I mean, you have 30 second recovery on the bike, so you should be able to keep pretty good speed on your burpees. Like, push through the burpees and then just get on the bike. I hope people following along are thinking the same thing I'm thinking that like 30 seconds is a blip. Like, by the third round, I would get on the bike and be like, barely start turning over. By the time I'd look up at the screen, it'd be like 25. 26, you're like, oh, get off, <laughs> stand there, be like, ah, oh, pull the bar for 12, do these little, like, slug burpees, and then get back on the bike, and just hang on until 30 seconds, and, oh, it was so bad. There's, you can't, I mean, there's no pushing the burpees in that workout, if you're going unbroken on not, the snatches. Not for me. Not that right now, either, like, I just, yeah, it was bad, I just, like, Fully doing sets of 12 is a lot. You get to kind of eight, nine, and then the last few would be a bit of a struggle. By the last two rounds, three rounds, it was, you know, once you've done 50 snatches, yeah, those last few get a little sluggish. So you're just hanging on, like, it was great. 
her answers were the best. She said, well, just cycle a little slower on the barbell and just like hang on, bro. Sure thing. It was awesome. It was so hard. <laughs> I did all, all six rounds unbroken, but my pistols were, or my um, burpees were predictably very slow.